Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we did was decompose numbers and round numbers to uh, to specific place values, and we use a verti we're using vertical number lines, and we're using charts to decompose values. Um, basically, I know that sounds kind of strange, but uh, decomposing a number basically means we're trying to find the maximum value or the maximum amount of value, I suppose, we can have for any given place value. Now, let me draw that out so I can explain that a little bit. I'm going to start with a big old place value chart right here. Okay, and we're going to decompose the, that, the number within this. I'm going to make four rows because I have four digits in the number. Okay, and I'm going to put some vertical columns in as well. And I'm going to put a uh, decimal, eh, let's put them right here. Put the decimal right here. Actually, you know what? I don't want to put the decimal there. I'm going to put the decimal next to it. I'll just see why in a minute. Put the decimal here, 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 and here. Okay, so once I have my decimal one, I know my place value here. My ones, my tens. All right. I might as well put it up there too. My tenths, my hundredths, my thousandths. Okay? Now, first thing I'm going to do is decompo decompose. Might as well work the, with the tens here a little bit. So the tens place here, the tens place. How many total tens can I pull out of this number? If you think about money, I have $8 and about 55 cents somewhere in there, uh, which means I can't pull any tens. In other words, I can't make use any $10 bills. There are no $10 bills I could use for, the, for this value. So I have zero tens, all right? Which means I have eight ones still. I have five tens. I have four hundredths, and I have six thousandths. Now I'm going to shift over to the next place value. I'm done with the tens. I'm going to deal with the ones. What's the maximum number of ones? Or in money, maximum number of singles I could have for this particular value? And well, the answer is eight again. You only have eight. Eight, five, four, and then six. Now here's where it gets interesting. Now I'm going to maximize the number of tenths I have. And let me write the number over here again. So we, I'm not going to start messing with this number a bit. Maximum number of tenths. Now, tenths in money are dimes, right? So the maximum number of dimes I could pay out for this entire number if it was money, because I'm going to have five dimes here. I'm good with that. But that's not the maximum number of dimes I can have. Let's pretend that a dime is the largest currency we have. How many dimes would you need to make this? Well, this, it has to do with this eight over here, because in the ones place here, I can have 10 dimes for each of these ones. Well, if I can have 10 dimes for each of these ones, and I have eight once. Well, if it's 10 for each of these things, then I have 8. That means I'm going to have 80 dimes. Well, if I have 80 dimes, right, for this, and I have 5 dimes for this, that's going to give me a total of 85. Right, plus, I have to add the 5. I have 85 dimes, or 85 tenths. So on my chart here, I'm going to stick that in, 85 tenths. I have 4 hundredths still, and I have 6 thousandths also, because I can't put those into dimes. They're smaller than a dime, or smaller than a tenth. Okay? So far, so good? <laughs> So now we're going to deal with the hundredths place, right? Done with the tenths, now I'm going to deal with hundredths. Hundredths are like pennies. What's the maximum number of pennies I can have if I had $8 and, let's say, you know, 54 cents and then that point zero zero six in there. But $8.54, if I had, if I'm counting just in pennies, I'm going to have 854 pennies, right? Because I have 100 pennies for each of these dollars, and there are eight of them. I'm going to have um, 10 pennies for each of these uh, dimes here, and there are five of them. So, and, of course, the four, which are already hundreds. So I have 800, and you can see the pattern here forming, and six left here, forming on the chart. Okay, now let me do one more. I'm just going to cruise. I'm going to build one more. I guess I should have done five rows at the very beginning here. There you go. And now I'm going to deal with the thousands place. Now with the thousands, same deal here, thousands. So I'm going to have 10 for each of those four for this. I'm going to have... 100 for each of these five. I'm going to have 1,000 for each of those eight. I'm going to add them all up, and I'm going to have 8,546 thousandths. And that's it. If I put 10 thousandths in, I'm not going to have any there, right, as far as 10 thousandths is concerned. But if I had a box down here, I would have the eight, the five, the four, six, and the zero there, which is neat. You can see the pattern just keep on going. Now, how does that work for me when I'm rounding? Well, the interesting stuff just hasn't ended yet. Here we go. Let me get rid of all this here. So here I'm going to, oh, let me do this one first. I'm rounding to the tens place. Well, if I'm rounding to the tens place, I notice uh, what I'm going to do. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do this one here. I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to do the hundredths. 
I'm doing this guy here. Here's my A, my hundredths area. Here it is. There's my A right there. Okay, this is going to be this guy. I'm going to use that for my decomposing chart. And my B is my tens. I'm going to use that one here. Here's my my B. I'm going to use that one. But I'm going to start here. So my hundredths, the maximum number of hundredths. I uh, sorry, um, hundredths, hundredths. Oh, wrong one. I'm going to move this over here. Not that one. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm using this one because this is my, I have it rounded, right? I'm decomposing to the hundredths place. Here's my A right there. Okay, so I have 800 possible, 854 hundredths. But if I'm rounding, it's either going to be 854 of these pennies or I'm going to have 855 of these things, right? Because I have the six sitting here. So it's a little more than 854 pennies. So it's either I'm going to round to 854 pennies or 855. One more penny. It's somewhere in between, right? It's somewhere in between these two. Now, if these are pennies, right? Right. And inside, if I'm going to break that up into 10 parts, well, hundredths are going to become thousands, right? Because this is 855 hundredths, 854 hundredths. I need to break that up into 10 pieces. Inside are going to be thousands, right? So here's going to be 854 and 1,000, 854 and 2,000, 854 and 3,000, 854 and 4,000, 854 and 5,000, right? And six thousandths, and seven thousandths, and eight thousandths, and nine thousandths. This will be ten thousandths, right? Or eight hundred fifty-five hundredths. Same thing. Now let's go to the chart. I notice I have six thousandths on my chart. So that's this guy right here, right? That's six thousandths. So here's my plotted area. Now notice it's a little higher than halfway. It's a little more. So if I'm going to round, and my choices are eight hundred fifty-four hundredths or eight hundred fifty-five hundredths, I have to go up. Because here, right there, is six thousandths, right? Right from my chart, right there. There's six thousandths right from my chart. So I have 854 and six thousandths. I have 854 and six thousandths, which is closer to 855. So if I'm going to round, I'm going to say, hey, you know, I have eight and 546 thousandths is about, and I'm rounding to the hundredths place, is about 855 hundredths. Because I'm rounding to the hundredths place. Now in standard form, that 855 hundredths is like saying 855 pennies in money. That gives me $8 or $8.55 or just plain old 8.55. Okay? Now with the tens place, this one's a little interesting. I don't have any tens. Okay, if I decompose to the tens, which I did, I don't have any. So that's a big fat zero. Well, it's either be going to be zero tens or it's going to be one ten. One or the other. Now, in between, all in here are ones. Well, I have exactly eight ones. And if this is five ones, six, seven, eight, there are my eight ones right there. So I have zero tens and eight ones. Well, obviously, that's once again closer to the top. So if I'm going to round to the tens place, this is going to be about one ten, which equals, or about, plain old ten. Okay, so I have one ten. That's just ten. All right, so that's how it works. Okay, so you start with one place value, and this is hundredths, and then inside you do the one smaller place value, which means it has to be in thousands, because the thousands, ten of thousands, is going to make up one of the hundredths. Okay, that's the deal. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.